Are you there this morning? Are you awake? I cannot even hear your voice. Everybody shout Jesus. There's power in that name. Authority in that name. Miracle in that name. There's salvation in that name. And this morning that salvation is coming to you. That healing is coming to you. Give me that name again. If you know that you are going to get that miracle power in the name of Jesus today, give me that name again. You know that your curse will be rolled away. Bad luck will be rolled away. All your sicknesses are going. They will go to the depths of the sea never to come back to you again. You believe that shout Jesus. I thank God that you are here this morning. I am going to point you to the journey that leads to perpetual, permanent, perfect salvation and healing. And from this morning, your life will never be the same again. Your family will never be the same again. Your business will never be the same again. Something is going to happen to me. I said something is going to happen to me. Me. What are you? Keep up that hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. We glorify your name this morning. Lord, I pray, no matter the condition of anyone now, you take everyone out of this position and take them higher. A better life, a righteous life, a saved life, a forgiven life, a free life, a prosperous life, happy life. Lord, I pray, everything negative, everything evil, everything from Satan, everything from darkness, wipe away from every life in Jesus' name. Do something special in every life. Something spectacular in every life. Something supernatural in every life. That we will remember this special day. I will never be the same again in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm reading this story to you today. The story of a nobody that became somebody. And every good thing in this story will be transferred into your life. And the center of the story is the name you know already. The name is Jesus. And when that name comes to the center of your life, the name of Jesus comes to the center of your soul. The name of Jesus comes to the center of your family. That everywhere you go, he goes with you. You stand, he stands with you. Your sleeping is there with you. At home is there with you. And you take Jesus with you everywhere. You will discover something spectacular, supernatural, special in your life. It's a name that has all power. It's a name that heals the sick. It's a name that saves the sinner. It's a name that purifies the believer. It's a name that empowers the believer. 
is the name that changes our lives. It is the name that raises the dead. It is the name that reverses every cause in your life. It is the name that wakes you up when you are dead and when you are slumbering and when you are sleeping in all the lethargy of your life. It is the name that cleanses your clean. That's the name I bring to you today. The name of Jesus. You love him. You believe him. You, you accept him. You hold on to him. You say this Jesus is mine today and mine forever. I'm reading to you from Mark chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. And had heard and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and she was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind and he touched his garment. You will touch him today. I said you will touch him today. When you touch him, he touches you. And something good will happen to you. I'm waiting for your amen. She heard of Jesus. That's the beginning of a turning point in your life. She heard of Jesus. Is the source of salvation in your life. She heard of Jesus. It's a power for healing in your life. She heard of Jesus. That's the name that breaks every yoke in your life. She heard of Jesus. That's what gave her ticket for heaven. She heard of Jesus. That's what closes the gate of hell for you. She heard of Jesus. It's the light of the world. That's the name that brings you out of darkness into light. When she had heard of Jesus, she came. She came. You know there are many people they hear they do nothing about it. They hear they close their mouth. They close their eyes. They kind of shackle their feet. She heard and she came. She heard and she acted. She had and she did something. Number one, desire. Number two, determination. Number three, destiny. And I want to show you, it is your determination, not your desire, that determines your destiny. There are many people that have desire. I want to have a better life a better family a prosperous business a happy life i want to go to heaven all that is desire but you join that desire with determination i will i will do something i will act i have heard i will come i've heard of jesus she came determination that joins with desire that determines your destiny this special morning i want to tell you your destiny will change for the better verse 27 when she had heard of jesus she came in the press behind 
and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. I shall be healed. I shall be saved. I'll be set free. I'll be delivered. There was no doubt in her heart. Only that I touch. Only that I touch. Anything that will hinder me, I clear out of the way. I must touch him. I will touch him. I have to touch him. The moment I touch him, I will be made whole. You will touch Jesus this morning. Every bad thing you see in your life today, after touching Jesus this morning, you'll never see them again. The miracle is in your mouth. What you say, I will touch him. I will be made whole. The miracle is in your hand. You stretch out your hand and you touch him. Satan will not destroy your life. Sickness will not destroy your life. Sin will not ruin your life. Hell will not hold you down. Look up. Heaven. You will go there. I'm talking about somebody there. If you determine, I will get to heaven. If you say, I will get to heaven. I have heard of Jesus. I am going with him. I separate from Satan. I am going with Jesus. I will get to heaven. Satan cannot hinder you. Evil spirit cannot hinder you. Society cannot hinder you. Nothing will hinder you. I will get there. I will get there. What are you? I will get there. Say it with your mouth now. Say it with your mouth now. Say it with your mouth. She heard, she said. She heard about Jesus, she said. I will touch him. And when I touch him, I shall be made whole. Some people say, Will I be healed? Why don't you change that? Language is very important. Will I? Will I? Change it around. Instead of will I, I will, I will, I will, I will be healed. I will be healed. I'm talking to somebody. I will be healed. I'm talking about somebody there. I will be healed. Cancer will not kill you. I said cancer will not kill you. I said that evil spirit will not kill you. I said this disease will not kill you. You hear about Jesus. You come. You say, I will be healed. You will be healed. And sin will not destroy you. It doesn't matter the direction the source that sin is coming from. I will be saved. I will be saved. Secret society will not kill me and bury me and send me to hell. I will be saved. She said it with her mouth. And the Lord confirmed it. And the Lord will confirm it for you this morning in Jesus' name. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. As she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. She was healed of that plague. 
Verse 34, and he said unto her, He will talk to you. He will talk to you. Jesus will talk to you. He will forgive your sin and talk to you. He will save your soul and talk to you. He will heal your body and talk to you. You will feel different in your body. You will feel different in your soul. And he called her daughter. Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. That's the story. I'm talking to you on the journey from despair to deliverance. The journey from despair unto deliverance. And as you look at the journey of this woman, the suffering of 12 years stopped in a moment of time. As I look at your life today, the suffering of 20, 30, 40, 60 years will be stopped in a moment of time this morning. Moment of miracle. Morning of miracle is coming your way. And you're going to have it today in Jesus' name. Look at this. Because this miracle became a property, an enjoyment, an experience of this woman. Number one, the worsening trial of the frustrated. The worsening trial of the frustrated. She became sick. She had issue of blood. It was flowing and flowing and flowing. Twelve years, twelve years. She spent everything she had. She was nothing better. A worsening condition. Maybe you have gone from bad to worse. In your in your health. Bad. And you've done everything. You have not found solution. Praise the Lord. Solution has come. I said solution has come. You see Jesus. You see solution. You see, you see Jesus. You see healing. You see Jesus. You see miracle. This is your morning of miracle. Number two, the wonder walking touch of faith. The wonder walking touch of faith. If I may but touch it, all I need is to touch it. All I want is to touch it. All I want to do is to touch it. If I can only touch it, I know. I am sure. I will be made whole. This is that time you are going to touch Jesus. The wonder walking touch of faith. Number three, the wonderful triumph of faith. The wonderful triumph of faith. You will overcome. Don't give up. You will overcome. Don't cry again. You will overcome. Don't complain. You will overcome. Don't be anxious. Don't be worried. You will overcome. Triumph has come. Christ Jesus conquered for you. He conquered sickness for you. He conquered sin for you. He conquered Satan for you. The wonderful triumph of faith. You are going to end your journey in triumph and victory. Doesn't matter where you are now. Doesn't matter the sorrow you had now. Doesn't matter your condition now. 
you will go from that condition, you'll come to the mountain top of triumph and victory. Number one, the worsening trial of the frustrated. Look at that verse 25 again. And a, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. And she had suffered many things of many physicians and had, had, and had spent all that she had. And she was nothing better but rather grew worse. Can you imagine the situation of this woman? Because you see, this woman had suffered every day, every week, every month, every year for, t for 12 years. And the record says she had issue of blood. What does that mean, issue of blood? That means the blood was flowing from her regularly, continually, every time for all those 12 years. Number one, that made her feel unclean and defiled. Number two, that made her untouchable from the horseman. Number three, that means that the children, they were always perceiving the odor of this issue of blood every day. They knew mother to be unclean, to be sickly, and to be defiled. Number four, in the land of Israel, when somebody had an issue of blood like that, She's not allowed, she's not permitted to get to the synagogue. She remained out of the synagogue for all that long time, 12 years. Not able to hear the word of God. Not able to fellowship with the people of God. Not able to pray, not able to sing, not able to give adoration to the Lord. Can you imagine that for 12 years, I want to be in fellowship, I cannot. I want to get to church, I cannot. I want to hear the word of God, I cannot. And remember, at that time, the Bible had not been printed for everybody to hold and read in their houses. They had to go to the synagogue, to their church building, to ever hear the word of God. And for 12 years, all that was not possible. And then she could not walk in the market. She could not do anything. All the money she had before, and she was spending on this sickness continually every time and getting worse and worse. And the people that started helping her in the first few years of the sickness, they had given up. Think of loneliness. Think of feeling abandoned. She felt lonely. She felt abandoned. But a wonderful day came. Like your wonderful day has come today. I said your wonderful day has come today. But I want to tell you. It was a worsening condition. Her health failed and went from bad to worse. Her family relations failed and went from bad to worse. Business life collapsed and went from bad to worse. The possibility of fellowship and worship failed and went from bad to worse. The pain of this issue of blood went from bad to worse. The helplessness went from bad to worse. The physical, the, the physical sickness now brought psychological inferiority unto her. Because 
because of that worsening condition. And today, maybe you feel lonely. Maybe you feel abandoned. Maybe, maybe you are sick. Maybe you are oppressed. Maybe you are taken away from fellowship and you are out there all alone by yourself. There is a deformity. There is a sickness. There is a defilement that you cannot come in. But she heard of Jesus. All your anxiety, all your care. Bring to the mercy seat and leave it there. Never a friend like Jesus. Never a body he cannot bear. And whatever the condition may be today, anxiety and worry, body and heartache, a load in your heart, a load at your back. She heard of Jesus and she came. You're hearing of Jesus right now and you come. And the moment you come, everything will change. Did you hear that? In your life today, in your family today, sin or sickness, evil spirit or evil power, you hear of Jesus today, everything in your life, everything in your family, everything will change who is the person i'm talking about now everything will change i want to lose hope everything will change i won't run away everything will change i will not die everything will change i will not commit suicide everything will change I will not hide in a house somewhere. Everything will change. I will not run away from my house. Everything will change. Everything will change. I said everything will change. I said everything will change. Say it. Say it. I see Jesus today. I touch Jesus today. Say it. Everything will change. Let me hear you. Everything will change. I will not die. I will not die. Everything will change. I will not commit suicide. I will not cry again. I will not cry again. Everything will change. Number two. The wonder walking touch of faith. The wonder walking touch of faith. Verse, 20, verse 27. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. She heard of Jesus. That's passing. That means you sit down, you can fold your hand, you can close your eyes, you can bend down, but you are static and seated, but you hear, but you do nothing, you don't act, you are not a man of action, you are not a man of decision, you are not a man on the move. You hear, that's passive. You're passive, you're inactive. How many people have heard of Jesus? And they're passive. That's why they're not saved. How many people have heard of Jesus? And they're passive. That's why they're not healed. How many have heard of Jesus? And they're not delivered. Because they are passive. They are just there. But the woman said, I will add action to my faith. I will add action to my faith. And she came. She came. She didn't say, God sees me. 
knows my condition if God wants to help me let him come and help me that Jesus knows all things if he wants to save me let him come and save me and just sit down there and remain inactive and indolent or idle but she took action she said I hold my destiny in my hand miracle is for everybody I will get my miracle salvation is for everyone I will get my salvation peace of mind for everyone I'll get my peace I'll get my healing I'll get my salvation I'll get my husband back once I get healed then I clean up myself and dress well and I say man husband I'm not unclean again I've been healed by Jesus my children will come back to me I will get back to the market I will get back to work I will not remain here I will not be a beggar for all my life she heard and she acted this morning I call you to action your salvation is in that action your healing is in that action your destiny is in that action the improvement of your family is in that action your destiny, heaven, is in that action. She came in the press behind. That means there was a crowd following Jesus Christ. And this woman had been pleading for 12 years. Talk about somebody weak and anemic. Because she had been pleading for such a long time. She said, weakness will not hinder me. I will get to Jesus. And therefore she came. And she came in the right direction. And she touched Jesus. Number one, she heard. Number two, she came. Number three, she acted. Number four, she said. Number five, she believed. Number six, she touched. Number seven, she was healed. It was an individual touch. It's not saying, eh, we all say Jesus. No, I say Jesus is my savior. It's not community salvation. I say Jesus is my savior. It's not multitude salvation. I say Jesus is mine. I will touch him. Jesus came from heaven to the world for me. He came to save me. He died on the cross for me. If I was the only sinner in the world, Jesus would still have died. If I was the only sick person here in the world today, Jesus would still have to perform a miracle. Individual touch. Number two is an intentional touch. It's not just haphazard touch. Oh, everybody touches everybody else. And that's what Jesus said, who touched me? Oh, and Peter, the other people said, everybody is touching you. Said, no, this one is an individual touch. This one is an intentional touch. This one is an independent touch. It's not asking somebody, will you touch him? So that you will encourage me. If you touch him, then I can touch him. 
Is everybody touching him? Or am I the only one here wanting to touch him? He said, I don't care what other people think or do. Others may not touch him. I individually, intentionally, I today, independent of every other person's decision, I touch him today. Everybody in your family, they are not touching Jesus. You say, that, that's not my problem. Independent touch today. Whatever members of the family say, whatever they do, I tell you today, I touch Jesus. The community said, we are all of this religion. We are all, all, all of this. We don't want to touch Jesus. That's the business. Independent of them intentional that you say me i isolate myself identify myself i'm a candidate for heaven i touch jesus a woman of decision became a woman of destiny the one that is able to identify, isolate himself or herself and says individually for me, I touch Jesus today. Those are the people that get saved. The people have intention and purpose. Intention and purpose. And they say, I want an intentional touch. I'll be receiving for wanting to touch him. Some people have no intention. They have no purpose. They have no goal. There's nothing they're looking for. But this woman said, I am going there. I have intention. Some people are parasites. They don't have any mind of their own. They don't have any decision of their own. They are ashamed to stand and stand alone. They cannot be independent of other people. They cannot say, I was born into this world all alone by myself. I will die all alone by myself. And I'm going to decide where I will spend eternity by myself. Individual touch. Intentional touch. An independent touch. I'm talking about you. I said I'm talking about you. Nothing will hold you back. You will touch Jesus. You will have his salvation. You will have his healing. You will have his deliverance. Today it will happen to you. The wonderful triumph of faith number three. Wonderful triumph of faith number three. And straight way verse 29, the fountain of our blood dried up. 12 years of problem over in one day. 12 years of issue of blood dried up in a moment of time. It's coming to you. I said it's coming to you. I said it's coming to you. All the many years of sinning will end in a moment of time today. Jesus will be your savior. The pulse of sin. And if all those sins that came upon your life over and over and over again, thousands of times, in a moment of time, Jesus will say, I set you free from that sin, you are saved. She was healed. Look at verse 34. And he said unto her, Daughter, 
daughter. Check up in your New Testament. How many people did Jesus call daughter? He calls some others woman. But in this case, daughter. Daughter. She came into the family of God. There was an outward change. There was an external miracle. All the issue of blood dried up instantaneously. But there was an internal miracle. She came into the kingdom. Healed and saved. Saved and delivered. And brought into the family of God. Do you remember when some people came to Jesus? And he said, your mother, your brothers, your sister are looking for you. He said, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? He said, these ones that hear the word of God and believe and do it, they are my brothers and sisters. Do you remember he told those Jewish people, those Pharisees, he told them, he said, you are the children, the sons of the devil. He never called ordinary people, daughter or son. But this one that touched him, this one that believed him, this one that had an internal transformation. This one that had an external transformation. She said, daughter, thy face has made thee whole. What does that mean? Number one, she was healed of the issue of blood. The blood stopped. Issue start. But you know she's been bleeding for 12 years. Lean and emaciated. Very weak and the, the wind can blow her and she can fall easily. But Jesus said, you are not only healed, you are made whole. The power you lost through the 12 years of bleeding, that power has come back. The strength and the stamina you lost for all those 12 years, you are made whole. Everything has come back. The fellowship and the favor you lost all those 12 years, everything comes back and now you are made whole. Go, go in peace. No guilt again, go in peace. No condemnation again, go in peace. No anxiety again, go in peace. There's no worry anymore, go in peace. There is no doubt anymore, will God accept me? Will God not accept me? Go in peace. That condemnation is over, go in peace. Judgment is over. Go in peace. There is an eternity of joy waiting for you. Go in peace. And behold of thy plague. Number one, number one, she became daughter in God's family. Your chance has come today. Daughter in God's family. Number two, there was declaration of gracious favor. Declaration of gracious favor. Jesus declared to her, you can go to the synagogue, you can go to the church, you can go to the temple, you are made whole. 
go and show yourself to your husband and tell him there's no issue of blood anymore you can be reunited together with your husband now you can go in peace and go back home the declaration of a gracious favor and a destiny in a glorious future destiny in a glorious future daughter go in peace you are made whole internally and externally grace has recovered you and restored you I have a place for you in heaven destiny in a glorious future I transfer all that I've been saying, I transfer everything to you. You become a son, a daughter in God's family. Your glorious, gracious favor is declared from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Destiny in a glorious future. God has a place for you in heaven. You will not miss that place. How did this woman get everything? She heard of Jesus and came. And when you hear of Jesus and you come, that will change everything. This is your day. The day of deliverance. This is your money. Your morning of miracle. This woman said, I will touch him. And the moment she touched him, the issue of blood came to an end. As you raise up your hand, you are touching him. And the moment we mention Jesus, and in your heart to say yes he heals me i will say in jesus name you say amen that means it is done that means you are healed that means you are delivered that means those blind eyes will see it means those lame legs will walk it means that swelling will disappear. It means the deaf here will hear. It means that the dumb tongue will speak out. It means the issue of blood comes to an end. Your miracle is on the way now. It's coming to you right now. When you hear the final amen, check up yourself straight where she felt in her body you will see it in your body raise up one hand lay the other hand where you have the problem the name of Jesus never never fails father in the name of Jesus we thank you for this moment of miracle Thank you for this day of deliverance. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because you are faithful one. We know that you are here. Your power is here. And your anointing that breaks every yoke is here this morning. As your people are raising up their hands, they are touching you right now. And Lord, I'm asking, their healing will happen immediately. Their deliverance will come instantaneously. And I pray, Lord, it will be a touch of faith in Jesus' name. I bring the power of God unto you right now. And I pray that that issue of blood in your body will stop will cease, will come to an end right now in Jesus' name.
I pray that that sickness and disease that have been there for many years will be healed right now in Jesus' name. That swelling in your body, I command swelling, vanish away in Jesus' name. And near, come out in Jesus' name. That goiter, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. The water here that makes the head so big, I pray that that water will be drained out. Let that brain, let that head become normal right now in Jesus' name. And the body that is bloated, as if there's uh, water all over the body. I pray that everything that makes that body like that come out in Jesus' name. All the internal sicknesses was internal pain. Also, be healed in Jesus' name. Diabetes be healed in Jesus' name. And all that plague and pain in your body, I command that pain, come out in Jesus' name. Cancer in any part of your body. Cancer in any part of your body. I command that cancer right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, for those up, all these objects moving about in the body. All those evil things walking about in your body. Knocking you, scratching you, pinching you, destroying your happiness and your joy. I command those afflicted spirits come out in Jesus' name. That heat in the body, I command be healed in Jesus' name. Evil spirits attacking your brain, attacking your head, making you say, lunatic, I command you, evil spirit, come out in Jesus' name. Those who are deaf and dumb. Those deaf ears receive your healing. Dumb tongues receive your healing. Deaf and dumb speak out and hear in Jesus' name. Those who are blind, you will not go away from here blind. Blind eyes, I command you. Open and see in Jesus' name. Cataract, I command you. Glaucoma, I command you. Be cleared away now and see clearly in Jesus' name. That bandage of the devil that keeps in darkness, Satan, pack your load and go. Let light come in their eyes in Jesus' name. All those who are seeing double. I pray the Lord will touch those eyes right now. Begin to see in Jesus' name. Blindness be removed. Blindness be removed. Be healed in Jesus' name. I pray now for those who are lame. Those who have arthritis, those who are paralyzed in any way, those who have one part of their body missing, I pray for your miracle. I pray the power of God will come in your body. Creative power, stabilizing power, a mighty power, come upon your body in Jesus' name. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. With that hands, behold in Jesus' name. 
those who are bent before straighten up right now in Jesus name I pray Lord that everywhere now to the right to the left in the front at the back anywhere you are hearing the sound of my voice power comes to you right now the anointing that breaks the yoke flows to you right now be healed in Jesus name you are delivered in Jesus name receive your miracle receive your miracle receive your miracle Lord I thank you because I know it's done I know it is done in Jesus name I pray and everybody said amen it is done amen it is done you're healed the Lord has touched you the Lord has delivered you check up yourself now your miracle is there it will be permanent